In this video presentation, we're going to take a look at a precision measuring tool called the dial caliper. Uh, you can see my dial caliper in its case right here. Uh, this tool allows us to measure dimensions on objects to within one thousandth of an inch very quickly, very easily. And I'm going to walk you through some of the ways that we can use the dial caliper. Also, uh, take a look at some of the parts of it as we're doing our presentation here. So let me get my dial caliper out and get the case out of the way. Uh, whenever I pick up my dial caliper, some of the things that I notice about it, of course, is the dial. The dial is going to show thousandths of an inch. The blade, which shows us whole inches and tenths of an inch. We have our outside measuring faces here, which is going to let us measure across the outside of an object. And up here, the shorter ones are our inside measuring faces that let us measure across the diameter of a hole or something similar to that. Now, when I begin to use my dial caliper, I want to unlock the lock screw right here about a half turn. It doesn't need to come out very far. And with this fine adjustment wheel right here, I can use my thumb and open the tool up very quickly, very easily, and close it up. So you can see how that operates there. But as I begin with my dial caliper, I always want to check with the measuring faces all the way closed to make sure that my needle is sitting on zero and you can see right there that mine is not in some way this dial has become unadjusted so I've got to adjust that and get it in the right orientation before I begin so there is a dial adjustment screw right down here at the bottom that I need to loosen about a half turn and then I can actually rotate the face of the dial to bring the zero right to where my needle is located and that looks pretty good. Now I can lock down the dial and have it in the right starting spot. I can still open and close that just like before and get everything going. When I come back to close position you see I'm still on zero. To uh, measure an object, let's say for instance just taking a look at it right here uh, opened up there. I'll put this on here so that I can hold this up a little bit closer. To take a reading, when I begin, I always want to begin with the blade. My zero whole inch mark is here. I can see one whole inch is right here. Two whole inches is right here. Those numbers are above the bottom row of numbers a little bit, so I know they're whole inches. And then the smaller ones in between are tenths of an inch. Now one of the things I want to be very careful of is to keep in mind I'm always looking for the lines, not the numbers. So you can see those lines, those are actually what I'm measuring to. The lines just give me reference of which inch or which tenth I'm dealing with at that point. So I'm always interested in the lines. So in this case, if I were to take a measurement based on the distance between the measuring faces here, uh, there are two parts that I will take from the blade. I would take down the number of whole inches. Well, there's zero, there's one, there's two. So on my uh, sheet where I'm recording this, I would put down two and then a decimal point. And then after the decimal point, I'm going to look for how many tenth marks I have. So I have one tenth mark I see right there for one tenth. I see the number two, but I'm not quite up to the line yet. And my double check on that is to look at the dial over here. You can see I'm at about 93 thousandths on the dial. That tells me since I've not back to the zero that I haven't gotten to this next line yet. So I would have 2.1 and then go to my dial for the last part of the measurement and add 93 to it so that I have 2.193 inches or 2 and 193 thousandths. Let's see how that works on an actual object. I'm going to use this uh, Lego, this Duplo Lego right here. I want to measure across from end to end. So I'm holding the object. Now I'm going to snug up my outside measuring faces on it and you can see I'm still putting a little bit of pressure 
against the fine adjustment wheel with my thumb. Now one of the things that I like to do is now just come up here and lock down the dial caliper. So at that point, now I can handle that a little more easily, and I can even slip the object out of the way in a lot of cases right there. So if we take a look at this measurement, using our process, I can see that I have zero, one whole inch, two whole inches. So on my paper, I would write two point and then looking for the tenth marks, I see the line for one tenth, two tenths, three tenths, four tenths, and there's my five tenths. And if I check against my dial, I'm back at zero, which means I am directly on that line. So this would be 2.5 tenths, and zero on the dial would be recorded with two zeros for two decimal places in my final number. So my measurement at that point is 2.5 inches or two and five hundred thousandths. Let's take a look at another measurement. We'll unlock that one. And then let's say that on this Lego I want to measure uh, the distance from one end of the pegs to the other. So I'm closing up the same way, lock down my lock knob so now I can take my thumb off the fine adjustment and slip the object out. And when I go back to it here, I can now see that I've got zero, one, two whole inches. So I'm recording that point tenths, I see one tenth, two tenths, but I can't see the third one, so I have two tenths, looking at the lines on the on the blade, and then by looking at the dial, I can see that that actually is maybe just a little bit past 50, and mine is pretty close to the 51 mark. So since it's closest to that one, I would add 51 to my notation, inches, and that measurement across the pegs is 2 and 251 thousandths of an inch. And that's the basic process that we use for making measurements with the dial caliper. Uh, let me show you a couple of other possible ways of making some measurements. So if I take my Lego and I look over on the back, you'll notice that I've got some uh, circular parts there that are hollow. If I need to know the diameter of one of those, and I can actually put the inside measuring faces inside there. And by bringing those out, you can see there that I'm actually bridging across that whole area. Lock down my lock adjustment there and then I can take that out and then perform my reading the exact same way as I have done before here in this case I do not have any whole inches so I would record zero point and on there I can see one tenth two tenths three tenths four tenths by the lines that I'm seeing so I record four and then from the dial, I am very, very, very close to 40 thousandths. So I can record 40 in my inch mark. So that one is 440 thousandths on the inside diameter of that particular hole. So that's pretty easy to check the inside diameter of a hole or something that, like that with the inside measuring faces. Let's say, for instance, that I need to check the depth of something from top to bottom, like, for instance, the depth of that hole. Now, this is a little tough for me because I need about two more hands to do this. But if you'll notice there, get my hand out of the way, I'm actually putting the back end of the blade against the top edge of the hole area, and then by adjusting down the dial caliper, 
this little depth rod comes out of the back and that depth rod goes down and touches at the bottom and then I can come back and take my reading from the dial caliper exactly the same way I've been doing and it will tell me how deep that hole is from top to bottom and that's a pretty handy feature of using the dial caliper there so uh, real quickly there once again the dial caliper is a precision measuring tool it allows us to make accurate measurements down to when within one thousandth of an inch and be able to repeat those over and over very very accurately as long as we're careful and we're looking directly at the blade directly at the dial as we're taking our measurements and recording one two and then the third part of the measurement each time so that we don't forget what those are we want to be sure that we're including the units on inches with that so that we can keep up with our actual true measurements on the object that we're working with. Hope this helps you a little bit as you're uh, working to master use of the dial caliper. And as always, if you have questions, please let me know.